on the little 3000. And then you're gonna set it in the boiling water. To enter the giveaway, all you have to Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before I was doing stuff like that, I was doing stuff like this. My name's Joey Antonelli and you're watching my channel. I've grown up in the same area my whole life, fishing the same waters with a family full of fishermen. Now I'm on the water more than ever. Thanks for tuning in to another episode and if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get back at the action. <laughs> So we're testing out the brand new Guard 3000, and my hand's shaking. That doesn't happen too much out here, but that's because this guy came on the other side. Stud Kubera, 10 pound braid, Guard 2 3000. Got him. Official measurement. My hand's still shaking. 29. Same as mine, bro. 29 inches, 10 pound braid. 16 pound fish. Big old Kuberas on the little 3,000 with 10 pound braid. Look at the teeth on that thing. And I think we're gonna do a whole skull mount on this one. So you guys ask the process on that a lot. We'll go ahead and show you how I do it. I didn't get that Kubera fight on video, but we're gonna make a video out of it for you guys. And it's a video that has been requested for a while now. Uh, if you notice in my fishing room, I have all the skull mounts and jaw mounts up on display on that shelf. And a lot of people ask me how you make those. So that's what we're doing in this video. We're going to show you exactly how you go ahead and take a fish head like this and turn it into a jaw mount or a skull mount. Now this is that Kubera's head where a couple months later, if you don't have the time to do it right away, just put it in the freezer and save it till you got a windy day, which is what we're doing today. We're going to start the process, show you exactly how I do it. And then I'm going to be giving away this full finished skull mount along with a little Janto gear swag bag. That's my merchandise for the channel. Check the description that has links to that. And then uh, throughout the video, I'll tell you how you can enter for a chance to win this. But I wanna show you what we do here. So when I cut this off, I also cut off the inside. That's like basically where like the throat or the collar and the tongue, the gills, pull out as much meat as you can because we're gonna be cooking this. And the less meat you have in there, the better because you're gonna have to end up cleaning it all up and cleaning it all out. So now we're going to the kitchen. So we got some water boiling. That's the first step you're gonna do once you're ready to start cooking this thing. And uh, you should use a really big pot. This pot's really not big enough, but you can make it work. Steam is going to be giving me some trouble here. So let's grab our frozen fish head. And then you're gonna set it in the boiling water. Oh my God, this thing is not gonna be big enough. We're gonna have to move it around. But as it cooks, the bones will, uh, meat will come off and we'll be able to move it around. Uh, the mouth will open up, it'll all become pliable again, but boil it all around, make it so you can uh, start cooking all the meat and skin. So that's only been a few seconds in there. You can see the skin is already starting to cook. A lot of people will ask me how bad this is, like the smell and everything. It's really just like you're cooking fish. It's not that big of a deal. It smells like fish, definitely, but it's not something that's like super gross. So we might add a little more water to that, but we're gonna, we're gonna let it boil and then basically flip it over and do the other side after a little while until we can start getting this to all separate. Looks like it's been cooking pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and, it's been about 10 minutes, just for reference on time. And you just kinda kind of wing it. So like you can see the bones are starting to separate. The steam is gonna drive me nuts. Yeah, so like that's a nice little gill plate right there. So I'll go ahead and take that and it will still need to be cleaned out some, but that's a good little gill plate right there. We should be able to start pulling off some of this and just dropping it back down in the water because that's gonna be a lot of little pieces for us to put together. We want to all get, that, all, that, get all that meat cooked off it. Yeah, big old gill plate right there. It's going good though, going good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pulling these pieces out that are all cooked up and dropping them in this strainer. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be taking them all out and cleaning them all. We're pulling the jaw apart now, that's the top of the jaw. And then here's the bottom. Let's see if it comes out easily. There we go, see it's all kind of breaking apart now. We're gonna let that soak a little bit more. I'm gonna grab the other top piece. 
Oh, it fell in there. So we'll get that later. So here's all the bones I pulled out of the pot of the boiling water, and then that's what was left over. That big chunk is the skull. We're gonna go ahead and take all this outside, take it out to the hose, and get it cleaned up. So here's everything. These are gonna be all our pieces. They're still super messy and dirty, but we're gonna clean them off right now. I'll show you how we do that. We got the pile right here. This is what came off the skull, and then this is what's left of the skull. We'll go ahead and uh, get this skull cleaned up first, like the big piece of the skull, and uh, show that to you. What we're gonna do is take the hose and start hitting it with some water pressure. So you can see it already, it's really, really clean compared to how it looked before. We're gonna go ahead and keep working on that. So we're just about done cleaning them up. We got the bottom jaw here and the teeth don't look that big till you start pulling off all the rubber. All that skin hides these giant chop chompers and the bottom jaw actually has smaller teeth than the top jaw. If you boil them for too long, you might lose some teeth. So make sure you look for them so you can glue them back in. But these pieces are just about done. I'm gonna finish cleaning up that bottom jaw and that is what we're gonna have to put together. Now you can start to see what's gonna go on here. We're gonna end up putting all this together but we're nowhere near done cleaning up first. You can see there's that bottom jaw. You can see so much teeth exposed once you clean them up a little bit. And then that hole right there, we lost a tooth. So you wanna make sure you're looking when you're doing this. There's that tooth we lost. We can glue it back in there and it'll look perfect once we're done. But this is kinda just the very beginning process. I usually let it dry like this for a little while. There's gonna be some meat up in there that you're gonna to wanna to clean out. You gotta get all this done very good. And I'm probably gonna separate that right there. And then that way we're left with just the skull. Gotta cool off in the AC for a little bit. Now, I'm gonna take this moment to tell you guys that the part we just did where we took the head, boiled it down, picked out the bones, roughly cleaned them up, that to me is by far the least fun and the most work. Now, putting all the pieces together might take longer, but it's fun. I like doing it. I mean, you end up with really cool stuff like this, and you can start to see the pro process or the progress take place pretty soon uh, after this step. But we're gonna go ahead, head out, and show you one more look at all these bones, and I'll let you know what we're gonna do now. First, you think they look super, super clean, and compared to what they started with, they definitely do look really clean. But let's take this bottom, uh, bottom of the jaw, for instance right there where the two jaws come together where they would touch like that there's like it's like a glue gunky looking stuff on there i like to kind of let it dry for a little bit and then it's some up here there's some at all the joints it's like almost like a cartilage or something i don't know exactly what it is um but we're gonna have to clean all that off when i lay them out on my cookie sheet uh, I like to lay them so that you have all your pairs together. That way you can make sure you're not missing a really important piece. Now there's a lot of little teeny, teeny, teeny bones that I don't even bother keeping. But for instance, like this piece right here, I know this is gonna go on the bottom of the jaw. If you only had one of these, you'd be running into some problems when you go to put it together. So make sure you got two of everything, especially the bigger pieces. Uh, we're gonna just kind of let it sit for a while, let it dry out, and then we'll start taking the next step, which will be cleaning it up even more. Next step, next step, we got some Dawn. Now Dawn removes oils. So we're gonna put a bunch of Dawn in this pot of water. Kinda get it mixed up a little bit. And we're gonna add all the bones to this. And these bones have like a greasy, oily feel to them. And that's what it is, it's oils. So we're gonna put all the bones in there. And this will, uh, help get rid of all that oil. I can already feel it on my hand. So we got all our bones in there. That's what it looks like now. And we'll show it to you after they've been soaking for a while. We've had it sitting in the dish soap for a while. And if you look over on the edges, especially, that's all oil that was on the, the bones. And now the soap, the dish soap has pulled it off because that's what it does. So we're gonna go ahead, pull all these out and set them in this bowl. So now I got a toothbrush and a little needle pick sort of thing. The pick is good for getting into like some really tight spots like right here. And get out any little pieces of uh, this like gelatiny crap, which I don't even really know what it is. Ooh, look at that nice little chunk. 
that would have been smelling good so we're just cleaning out as much as we can and then we're going to go in there with the toothbrush and get out all the other stuff look at that it's coming out nice and easy now pieces right there there it is a bowl full of bones now we're going to take some hydrogen peroxide this is going to turn them really white we're going to let them soak in that for I would do at least a couple hours. A lot of times I even let them sit overnight. There's other stuff that works. I know there's hair products. That's something to do with like bleaching hair or something like that, but this is just what I have and that should be enough. We want to make sure all the bones are completely covered. So we're going to angle them a little bit. And then we got two cool little bones in here. These right here, very, very cool bones. More about them a little bit later. We got them out of the peroxide, the hydrogen peroxide, and they are looking good. Look how white they are. So they actually will fade to yellow over time, but they look really good right now. We're gonna go ahead, get set up on our little assembly station and move inside. Okay, if you've never done this before, this probably looks really intimidating because there's no instructions. We got a whole lot of pieces and there's no clear instructions on how to put them together, but we're about to make the instructions for this. We're gonna take all these pieces and turn them into a cool skull mount like you see behind me. And I got some nice little tips and tricks that I've learned from doing these things that's gonna really, really help, it, help you out doing your first one. Uh, even if you just wanna do a jaw mount, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. It's super simple, really easy to do. Now, I gotta put a little disclaimer in here. I'm not a marine biologist. I might put some pieces in the wrong spot. So if I do that and you're a marine biologist or you just know where they go, let me know in the comments section and I'll uh, adjust it in future builds. But it might not be perfectly correct, but I promise you when we're done, it's gonna look really cool. And we're gonna go ahead and spin this thing around and get started on this. Go ahead and get started with the jaw, the jawness of all this. And gluing this stuff together by yourself is tricky. I use regular super glue, but I got something that helps me, helps me get through it all right here. Now, this is exactly what you think it is. It's baking soda, because baking soda is a catalyst for super glue, meaning Super glue touches baking soda and it dries instantly. So we can kind of make a plaster. So instead of sitting there and holding pieces for 30 seconds or whatever till they dry, you touch baking soda and that instantly dries. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna get some of my baking soda, my little pink bowl, dump all that in there. That is an unopened one. And then I just got a couple little tools, little needle, a little knife. We'll show you what, how we use those. But the first thing I'm gonna do is take either the top or the bottom jaw and put them together. So we're starting with the bottom jaw. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it together. I got some baking soda on it. We're gonna put a little bit of baking soda in there. And then we're gonna take our super glue and drop it on there. Couple little drops, come on, go, go, go. And then I'm gonna take some more baking soda and set it on there. Just like that, it dries almost instantly. Now I'm gonna go around to the back side of it, do the same thing, just to make it a little stronger. I'm gonna do a drop of super glue in the crack Take that knife, a fork or something like that works really good, or some kind of little teeny spoon. And then you can see it right in there. That super glue is now dry. Scrape some off. I get, I get baking soda everywhere when I do this. And I just go like that. So there we go. It's already shaping up now. But right there, that's how I'm gonna do it. Right there, I got a point of contact we're gonna put a little bit of super glue on it. Barely any super glue. Then we're gonna take our knife, get a nice little bit of baking soda, dump it off. Let's do another little drop on there. And we'll do it again. There we go. 
see, we got a really good point of contact up here at the top, so we're gonna touch that also. It's already got a little bit of baking soda on it. So that is gonna be very strong now. Dump some more baking soda in there. Scrape out the excess. You know what? I think we got a little bit more. Let's do, it's not quite touching, so we're gonna put the baking soda on there first. And a dot of super glue. Look at that. So now we got our jaw. Looking good, looking good. Remember when I said make sure you look for those teeth, we're gonna go ahead and put this tooth in there. You can either leave it, you can kind of pick where you want it. I mean, it goes way up there. But I think we're gonna stick it down a little bit. Just like that. There you go, it's actually balancing really good right there. So we're just gonna do a little dot of glue and baking soda. There we go, we added that tooth in there. So that is the top jaw, that is the bottom jaw. Now we're gonna go ahead and get these next pieces on there. Piece. Pretty much anything you do to one side, you do to the other side. Now this is when you wanna look at it straight on and line it up. Because this is how straight the jaw is going to go together. You want to make sure your gaps are about the same in all areas. Super glue and baking soda. These little pieces. Now this, without this, the jaw will not stand up. So if you're doing just a jaw amount, you want to really make sure you get these pieces and they fit in like a puzzle piece, just like that. So we're gonna hold it nice and tight. And look for a good point of contact right there. And same thing, just a little bit of baking soda on the outside. Now it's glued in place and we're gonna switch to the inside and that's where we're really gonna secure it. There we go. So now we got the four pieces on the top, four pieces on the bottom, and they are just going to link up just like that. You glue that together, you got yourself a jaw mount. Now before you go crazy super gluing the heck out of every single one of these connections, set it down, see how it looks. I'm happy with that. That is your jaw mount right there. A lot of people, that's all they want. Took me maybe 10 minutes to glue it all together. So, looks pretty cool. Now, we're gonna go ahead and build up from there. This is gonna go around here, something like that. Now you can start to see how it's gonna look. We're just kinda seeing what fits right with the skull. And again, ideally, two people make it a lot easier, but like right there feels about right to me. And this is another piece, you gotta make sure you get it centered, because it'll look super goofy if you don't. I usually just guess it and then uh, see what it looks like. Cause you can snap the super glue off and retry. Oh, ho, 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 he's looking mean. He is looking mean. He is looking a little crooked actually. No, it's actually looking good. I'm happy with that piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the other spots of uh, contact. So let's set that down and figure out our next piece we're gonna use. Now we're just kind of piecing together what feels like it goes in the right space. This piece I've thought goes here. So I'm gonna kind of hold it right there and then just keep building off what you're doing. So my super glue. And we're still using our same super glue and baking soda technique. Taking more and more shape. So we just added that piece on and we did the same thing on this side. You wanna to try to get as close as you can, but really you can't see both sides at the same time from a profile view. So looking good, let's keep moving. There we go, getting closer. 
Just added that piece. Just added that piece right there, which is really weak now, but there's gonna be some more stuff going on underneath it. So that is gonna sit just like that for now. Just added in that gill plate right there. And now that's gonna be what it rests on. So that's gonna be pretty much how this is gonna sit once it's all done. Just got some more detail to add in. We got a lot more bones left. Put that big old flare on there, right there. Got that on both sides. Also snuck one in there too. So I put two pieces in here, one here and one here. They're rough, they feel like they're supposed to stop bait from getting away. Um, but the main reason I put them in there, they lock in really good and it's gonna make it a lot more stable. So when you display it, it's gonna be a, a stronger mount. So that's looking pretty good right there. We got a few more pieces to put on, uh, kind of fill these gaps a little bit and we're almost there. Just about finished here. A lot of times you can put these on there too, but I'm gonna be shipping this and these make it really, really fragile. Uh, they're just like other gill plates that go down like that. I'm gonna skip them. I'll include them in a bag in the giveaway and we'll do more about the giveaway in a second, but we got one more piece to do. Well, kind of two more, but we got the eyeball. Let's go do that one. That is the Kubera snapper. Look at those teeth. Now we're doing a giveaway with this one. This is uh, something we're gonna be giving away. I might be shipping it, so I didn't put those super little fragile pieces in there like you can see on this tile fish. Uh, but to enter the giveaway, all you have to do is comment Janto and, and, you gotta share something of mine. Share a, a video, share the link to the channel either on your an Instagram post or a Facebook story and then screenshot it so that you got it saved so that when I pick a winner, I'm gonna go through the comments and pick someone that wrote Janto and when I pick the winner, you have to be able to show me that screenshot. Show me that you shared it somehow. If you don't have an Instagram or Facebook, get your parents to do it. But we're gonna give this away. Uh, pretty cool little thing. I'll write the date and stuff on the bottom and what it is so you got that to remember. But you guys have been asking for this video for a while, so I decided to do it. Now, there's something else I wanted to show you. I'll set him down. Remember those really special little bones I told you about? They're, uh, I think they're called otoliths. I think I'm saying that right. These little guys right here, I'm gonna include that in uh, the bag of extras. These are the pieces I didn't feel like gluing on because I didn't think it was a good idea. But I'm gonna go ahead and put these in there. What these are, these are in all fish. It's in their inner ear and uh, you'll notice there's different sizes depending on the fish. Like this is the one from that tile fish. It's huge. It's a bigger fish, but also bottom fish like groupers, tile fish, stuff like that have bigger ones because it's used to control the, the buoyancy, I believe. Uh, and you can put that under a microscope or give it to someone that knows what they're doing and they can tell you the age of the fish. So kind of a cool thing. There's two of them it's in their inner ear. It's in the bag with this one. And that's it. We got our glide or uh, Kubera snapper all done up. I'm gonna go ahead, set them on the side. The winner will be announced in the uh, next video and then also in the description of this video. I'll update it once I pick the winner. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Check out the gear, janto.com. That's got my merchandise on there. And thanks a lot for watching. Later.